The wait is over. SteamOS 3.5 is now stable. More specifically, SteamOS 3.5.5. But many of us have been playing with SteamOS 3.5 for quite some time now. And now it's time for the stable channel to play. SteamOS 3.5 has been available for quite some time now, but in the form of beta and preview channels, which are not the most stable. So what have you been missing from SteamOS 3.5 this entire time? Well, even for those of us that have been in beta and preview for quite some time, it's not the same song and dance it used to be. But we'll get started with some of the most important features you need to look forward to. Before I get started, let's talk about this weird little changelog here. Added support for Steam Deck OLED. Seems like kind of a weird thing to say, but what if you're moving your SSD over from your old LCD deck to your OLED deck? It may cause issues unless you update first. So if you've got a 2TB in your Steam Deck and you want to transfer over to your OLED deck, then be sure to update to the latest version first. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about the various changes you'll find. Actual changes. First and foremost, in settings, you can adjust the display colors, you can change the vibrancy and color temperature. This is great because it lets users customize their own color preferences. Some people like it really saturated, and others like it kind of more muted, I guess. But given many people are about to get their Steam Deck OLEDs, or in my case, a Steam Deck OLED limited edition, it may not be necessary anymore. But this is still very useful for those with LCD Steam Decks. Next up is the new frame rate slider. The frame rate slider has changed in being behavior. No longer is it two separate sliders, one for frame rate limits and one for refresh rate. Now it's all one combined slider. The system will automatically pick whatever the best refresh rate for your frame rate limit is. For example, if you get onto a 20 FPS limit, it'll maintain a 60 hertz refresh rate because 20 divides evenly into 60. Next up is HDR and variable refresh rate support, if supported by your display. This won't magically give your LCD Steam Deck HDR or variable refresh rate support. But it's good for those who dock their Steam Decks. Next up are some scaling features, stretch and zoom features. These let you fill in those pesky little letter boxes, but honestly, I wouldn't use these features. I'd rather not have the games all stretched out and stuff. I'd rather just deal with the letter boxes or mod the letter boxes out, preferably. Next up is the fact that external storage devices are now auto mounted when connected to the Steam Deck. So before this update, you could not plug in a flash drive and just have it load automatically like you would on say, I don't know, Windows? But now it does, and now having an external games drive is super duper convenient on SteamOS. You also get drive management features like the ability to format external drives. Also included is a BIOS update, Firmware 118. This adds brand new undervolting features that I've actually covered on this channel, so if you want to check out my undervolting guide, be sure to check out the link in the description down below. And of course, the Steam Deck dock itself also has an update, Firmware 121, which adds variable refresh rate support and reliability when changing display modes and a bunch of other stuff. So that about covers it for all the important new feature updates, but I think it's time to talk about the software updates, because a lot has changed under the hood, and bug fixes as well. First and foremost, one of the most gnarliest bugs have been fixed. Fix an issue where certain workloads would exhibit severe CPU performance issues unless SMT was manually disabled. To answer all of your questions, yes, some emulators are affected by this, more specifically Dolphin, which emulates GameCube and Wii titles. But there are some games that get affected by this, like Sonic Generations. This has been a bug since the very beginning, and Valve has finally gotten around to fixing it. Thank goodness. They've also updated graphics drivers, which should provide some performance and functionality improvements. Valve gave one such example of a game running better, Starfield. Now I don't actually own Starfield on Steam Deck, but if someone wants to confirm it with me, be sure to do so. Also shader cache size should be much smaller, and games should stutter less, even without the proper shader cache. SteamOS is now based on a newer version of Arch Linux, and of course a newer version of the Linux kernel, which brings more security features and more optimized performance. Additionally, KDE Plasma, the Steam Deck's desktop mode, has been updated as well. KDE Plasma has had a number of updates since the Steam Deck's release, but they've never implemented any of these updates until now. There's a massive changelog in and of itself if you want to check it out, because I couldn't begin to possibly cover all of the new features. 
They've also improved Bluetooth connection stability, especially with multiple controllers, and they've improved sleep resume speed. There's also a number of specific game fixes, such as fixes for Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 4, or Disgaea 1 PC, or Returnal, or Overwatch 2. And I think that about covers it for all of the important details of SteamOS 3.5. For all of you stable channel people waiting patiently for SteamOS 3.5, the wait is over, and the wait was well worth it. Yes, I've been messing around with some SteamOS 3.5 features for quite some time now. Heck, people on Bazite have had these features for quite some time now as well. What matters is that this is probably the biggest Steam Deck update ever, and just in time for the Steam Deck OLED. This experience is so transcendent, so transformative, that it feels like your Steam Deck is a brand new device again. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos, and if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page, links in the description.